Good Halloween. Welcome to Onion Skin. Learning Harmony can be a little bit spooky sometimes. But we're going to take the edge off. I wanted to put together a small tutorial that uh, pretty well anyone should be able to follow along with. We're going to be making this adorable little spooky spider. Look at him go. Yeah. Although we're using Harmony Premium, you'll be able to follow along with these steps in any version of Harmony. Just wherever you see nerds work with layers instead. This is a great little demonstration to try and discover that happy middle ground I've been talking about between hand-drawn traditional and rig-based animation. This is going to have a little bit of both. And I'd like you to pay attention to where we are doing hand-drawn and where we are doing cutout because some places might surprise you. This first layer is going to be our roughs. Sketch in the spider or whatever you're doing, I don't care. The point is they're made of three levels of shape here. Body, head, hand with the fangs. Those are going to be drawn on three different layers accordingly. The legs, however, we'll get to in a moment. So that's what we're going to need. Control R, that is R for drawing, or Command R, of course, if you're on Mac. We need body, add, head, add, fangs. Notice that I kept the eyes and the head together. This isn't a rigging demonstration. This is still an animation demonstration after all. We only want to be building the parts that are absolutely necessary. Control H, that is H for composite. Uh, we'll bring everything together into one string and then I can delete that afterwards and have it all uniform like so. Now I am ready to go uh, with a cleanup face. Like I even needed one. I probably could have just drawn this raw, whatever. With that all done and paint bucketed, remember the order of the strings indicate layer order. I am already ready to animate this. Select all of the layers, control P to unify them in a peg. At the moment, all of our drawings are only being shown for a single frame. These are exposures. Select everything at the end, F5. will extend the exposures out across all 60 frames and hold still like this. With our single peg here, I can use the transform tool to pick up everything together as a unit and animate it sort of scooting left and right. As you saw, it has this sort of like jolty motion, right? So I'm going to press F6 to create a keyframe, also this button here, and another keyframe on frame 10, where I'm going to move it a little bit to the right by holding Shift and pressing the right arrow key twice to nudge it to the right, and I'll do the same thing on the first keyframe, nudging it two bits to the left, so we get a simple side-to-side -side movement like that. But that's all very boring, really. Notice how it has this snap, this sort of undershoot and overthrow, I want it to pop beyond where it goes and then come back just a little bit. Well, this is a little bit of a cheeky technique. I wouldn't always recommend it, but some of you might dig this. If you go to the Ease Multiple Parameters button here, we get a chart leading from the beginning to the end of the movement. This is normally used to speed and slow things up like this. So see how that sort of like gains speed as it goes? Well, if we're a little bit naughty, we can pull this thing below 0% instead, pressing apply next, which is just insane. Why? Because if I pull it beyond 100% at the end as well, apply to confirm everything, this is going backwards a little bit before going forwards again. And then you see how that, that spring motion that's being created. Fascinating, right? So this is naughty because we have technically created a keyframe, right? It stops and changes direction without it being marked on the timeline. So I, I, I need to confirm, they need to lock them into place. So I'm gonna go try and track down where that endpoint is, so like there, see what I mean? Press F6 there, that'll sort of lock it and then go find the other one, that's this one. So they're sort of immediate, right next to each other. But that's okay, because now that they're locked in, I can feel free to sort of massage and move these things around until it feels really, really good. At the moment, it's a little bit too, like see, it's still snappy and slidey. You know, it's not, it's not great. So. I'll try and, uh, try and pull these out just a little bit like that. So now we've got a uh, movement of two, movement of two, movement of two. Very clean. How's that looking? Hey, that's a little bit better. Sort of like, oh, sort of done the side four. There's, you know, interesting. <laughs> uh, let's have it play backwards the same way. So I uh, control C to copy those. And rather than just control V, I right click, go to paste reverse. So go boom and then boom, back again. Nice. All right, cool, happy with that. In between here, although the line is connected, there isn't actually any movement taking place because this keyframe and this keyframe are the same, right? We put it, we put it going backwards. So to make this clearer to look at, I'm gonna uh, click on that and press this button here, this sort of straight line. This is also control L, this breaks tweens. It's, it's not gonna change anything, but it's just a little bit easier to read. We can see blocks of movement. Uh, this is really nice because now we can sort of pick up and shuffle this. How long do we want it to, you know, is it just gonna be firing all the time? Is there gonna be a bit of a break in between, sort of pause? 
yours, yeah, right? You get it, you get it. So things are feeling a little bit nicer, but of course this movement is still very rigid. There is no benefit to the fact that this is broken up across three layers yet. It's all just one piece. Because it's all following one big old peg called peg, right? Here's the thing, there's the pieces inside the, you get it. So in the one I prepared earlier, you can see how it's sort of exaggerated. There's this sort of illusion of perspective happening. The head is moving a little bit further than the body. The fangs are moving a little bit further than the head again. How do we create that without doing it all by hand? Well, we can sort of recycle this peg and have it apply its same movement again and again. This is called a clone layer. So normally when you copy something that is a duplicate, a brand new instance based on an original, a clone remains connected to the original. Weirdly enough, this is done by copying and pasting with Control C and Control V. We're going to do it the slow way though, so you can get used to it. Uh, you go to the drop down at the top left of the node view and go to nodes, and here, no, oh, I've got to have the damn thing selected first, uh, and then you got all the different types of copy that you can make. What we're after here is clone drawings and timing. A timing clone is the main piece here. If you're doing this in essentials or advanced, uh, the shortcut is by right clicking on the peg, same deal. There we go. Look at that clone selected and timing. Uh, and it will appear somewhere. Look, if mine appears in the void, not, it, it'll work. It, it, it should be fine. It should be fine. Relax. Um, but the point is here is now we can sort of reshuffle these things around to exaggerate certain movements. Okay. So if I hold the alt key to weave it into this thread, we now have the first peg movement and then the second one and then the head, right? So it's gonna be the same movement twice in a row, which creates this. See how it's sort of exaggerated? Also, you'll notice that because they are clones, they are always gonna be tied together. If I pick up and move these around, they, they, they always match, right? This means for both time and for space. If I try and pick up the body now, see how the head is being applied twice. It'll move twice as fast as any other movement. Pretty wild, right? But we're not done yet. I'm gonna do the same thing again for the fangs, but of course putting it in here uh, doesn't really do anything. It just means that the fangs are, you know, the fangs are moving twice as far as the head. So like, you know, what's, what's the point? No, no, no. What we need is to take the heads one and weave it through here like this. So now we've got this daisy chained motion, body, then head, then fangs. So the fangs are going to be moving three times as much as everything else. And we get a very exaggerated perspective-y movement indeed. Uh, same as before, if I pick up any piece, we get this sort of movement going on. So, you know, you get a certain level of movement before the illusion will break and it becomes three separate parts. However, uh, a lot of the time, uh, you know, it's it's surprisingly effective, right? So you can sort of chomp down like this and sort of move around and go, yeah, yeah. Great fun. So that's all well and good. What about the legs? Okay, so the legs, seem like if we're following the same method, it's going to be all the more complex, right? There were six legs on this hexacnid and all of them separate pieces. They're all sort of moving out. What am I going to be busting out bones and having them all laid and cloned and sort of offset with their timing? It's like, like the engineering can very quickly snowball and it's just very intimidating. Now you're spending all your time dealing with wiring and not actually Forget all that, okay? We're here to draw. There's the benefit of 2D. We want to draw things, drawing things is nice. So we're going to get one layer out here, call it legs, press okay. This is going to follow along with the main body, like so. And I'll attach it above the body, but below the head. I'm gonna draw all three of these legs in one go on the same layer, like this. So they're just rigidly there, okay? Go to Windows Drawing. And what the drawing view shows us, notice that I like to have them sort of side by side with the camera view here, is just one layer by itself without any of the other noise. So I need to create a brand new drawing. I'm gonna to go to drawing number three here and go up to this one. This is create empty drawing. It will disappear and I'm ready to start making some new sketches. So currently I've got two slots, one legs, one squiggly. Uh, and I need to draw some second legs. This one is going to be with the legs scurrying all about. So this leg's gonna be retracted in like this. This leg is gonna be stretching right out, taking a step. Uh, and this one is gonna be up in the air, preparing for a step like that. One more, easy, easy. These three drawings, right? Look at them go. If I were to say copy and paste them again, notice that it is the same three drawings that get used twice. So we can maximize this rather than pressing paste reverse. If I was to right click and go to paste cycle, how many times? 
like a lot. The legs will continue to scurry wherever the pegs will lead them. So now we've got too, we've got too much animation now though, because of course it doesn't need to be walking whenever there is no movement happening. So to erase exposures without actually deleting the frames themselves is this one here. It's the K minus. Notice it removes all those little splits and the legs will stay still. This is what it looks like playing in twos, uh, but I'm going to crush them in uh, to ones like this, which is very funny. The last step is I need legs on the other side. Well, I don't want to be repeating myself, so I can take these legs and perform a clone once again. Uh, so hook it up to the main body one as before, but this time it needs a fresh peg because this one needs to be flipped. Under the transform tool, in tool properties, there is a little button here. This is flip, by the way, so, so flip that. There it goes, goes over to the other side, just sort of wedge that in place. And from here, you can just let it grow, do some exploration. What if we added in some extra substitutions on the face and it could blink? Or if the fangs could move, that could be traditional, or maybe a peg and they'd sort of like rotate, right? What if using that chain reaction from the body head fangs wasn't just moving side to side and I did get it to do like a lunge or moving forward, like explore, have fun, see what happens when you plug stuff into stuff or add different drawings and shuffle them around in different orders. The rabbit hole only goes deeper from here. And if you give this a go, please share it on the Onion Skin Discord. And if especially, especially if you take this base model and turn it into something else, create some different creatures, there is so much to explore and discover with this foundation. I hope you enjoy it and that this makes the whole process a little bit less spooky. Hey, thanks for watching right through to the end. Keep an eye out over the next week, if you will. There's gonna be a bit of a collection of content related to this little spider guy. If you see, there was a handful of deleted scenes where I went a little bit deeper into particular concepts like how the drawing view works, what's the drawing substitutions view, uh, and how to quickly switch between things being in twos and ones and things like that. Good stuff, but it added a lot of flab to this one. So uh, I thought I'm gonna release those just as little, you know, 20 to 30 second shorts that drill in on those particular features. Maybe I'll expand on some other things. Who knows? Uh, so if you have any particular questions or thoughts or things you want to add in the comments section, I might reply to those with a video as well if it requires a further demonstration, you know? I finally, after all this time, started figuring out what TikTok is. <laughs> so if that's your platform of choice, those shots will hopefully be appearing over there as well. There's a link for that in the description too. Finally, for Patreon supporters, the working files for both this spider you're seeing now and the demonstration one, that pink one, both of those are available there. And a whole long form bonus video of the lunge animation that you just, you just saw it as a time lapse, right? So, so that whole drawn out thing, if there's anything in particular there that you wanted to take a closer look at or just have on in the background while you work. I hope you dig it. I'm always open for some constructive feedback if there's anything that you think could be done a bit better or perhaps went over your head. And especially if there's anything you straight up disagree with, why not? And subscribe for next week. We're gonna make this functioning, legit functioning portal in Harmony. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are too.